Hey, good morning. What a crazy night it was. I came down from the barn and I had some Mexican food with my friend and that was good. It was cheap. Yeah, it was good. And then I got home and I was tired. So I took a nap and I slept from like 7 to 10. And then I got up and I went to bed and I slept until like 12.30. Then I was awake. So I did a little bit of journaling and catching up. And then uh, I started reading, reading that book by the the Buddhist nun, uh, I think it's called When Things Fall Apart, which is really, really good. And then I fell back to sleep by like one, th like I've slept for like 11 hours. I never do that. I never need more than five or six hours of sleep. It's kind of a weird day to have slept. I had so much I wanted to do last night and I just slept and slept and slept. So now I'm feeling behind because I got some sleep last night. Walking the dog and I meet up with my partner and run a bit and then play catch up, I guess. But hopefully the sleep did me good. Maybe I won't be as panicked and bad as I was yesterday. Maybe that's why. Maybe lack of sleep really affected my mood yesterday and I had a terrible day. I don't know. The day wasn't terrible. This school day was anxious, but okay. All right, so this is time, kind of a time crunch. I need to head north for 15 minutes before I could head back south for 15 minutes and buy the finish for my class. So uh, wish me luck on getting this one done because I'm not sure I can. There's been no better way to do it because they were sold out at the store I usually shop at yesterday. So I'm gonna keep this short and drive like a fiend. Well, no, I'm gonna drive responsibly. I, Ladies and gentlemen. If I don't drive up and get the finish that we ran out of yesterday, I'll have a group of kids that can't work today. And then I have to put them off by a day and do the same flipping trip after school when the traffic's bad. So what do you do? These are all the fun things you do as a, as a teacher in my position. I can disappoint probably 30 or 40 kids that need this finish today and say hey sorry wait till tomorrow or I can I can take a risk and go for it so all right let's see if I can get up there buy it and get to school in an hour I just got to tell you every car in the parking lot up here is a truck it's a pickup truck pickup truck pickup truck yeah it's like man town anyway I got here I got the finish and I don't know it's only 716 so doing okay I'm gonna head towards school and see if we can pull this off yep. All right, that was a busy day at school. All five classes working like Santa's elves. You know, when the deadline looms, it's just, it's like go, 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 go. And it's fun. And I had a great, I had a great day. I had a good time. I was happy and busy and involved and it was superb. So I feel really good right now. Yeah, I'm going to dash home and pick up Winnie and go back so that I can spend more time here tonight and maybe I can take her to the beach. Yeah, just not feel rushed to get home. So I think if I go now and come back, I shouldn't hopefully hit too much traffic. Fingers crossed on that. As a check-in, I'm, I'm feeling positive. Nothing from her. It is Thursday, which means God, maybe she'll be parked at the house. Let's see. It would so be nice if she wasn't. I'm grateful there is no white car here today. So I can continue on and be okay and get the dog and go back to work another okay day that good things got done. Oh, noisy down here, so maybe I'll cut this out. I'll see you later. Go, cross the street, go. Go, 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 go. All right, it is after 6 p.m. and I'm wrapping up today. I zoomed home after school to get and then I went back to work for a bunch of hours. And it's been good. Uh, a lot of kids are getting stuff wrapped up. This work looks really good. I feel good about it. Today's been a day of, I think disbelief is the best word for it. My brain just, it, it's funny how it tries to manage everything. My brain today can't believe this has happened again. I haven't been incredibly sad today. It's been more a case of the me of, wait, wow. The, the me of three and a half months ago how am I that same person? Like, I can't believe I was happily married three and a half months ago. I think that's what it is. I can't believe what I used to be. Not that I'm accepting what I am now as good. I just, it's hard to believe that I'm here. It's hard to believe that she's, oh, I don't know how to say that. It's hard to believe she's still alive. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's hard to believe that she lives nearby that she, that she was married to me and that we're here, that she chose all of this. You know, three and a half months later, where we're at is her doing, it's her choice. And I think maybe, maybe there was a small part of me that thought, given everything, 
maybe she'd realize what a mistake she made. Which is not to say I would welcome her back with open arms, but at some point she'd be like, oh my god, I really miss him. Like, he was great. <laughs> he loved me so much. We had a great relationship. I miss all of that. I made a huge mistake. And there hasn't been. There's none of that. She's moved on. She's she's committed. She's 100%. And that's who she is. I know that. It's, it's, it's such a silly thing for me to think, oh... Or, or for me to even way deep down where I don't want to like, admit that I hoped she would admit she made a mistake. Like I've said before, she's she's been really true to form. She flipped this relationship off like a switch, and she left. And aside from little steps in the beginning, she's been consistently not into being married to me anymore. And I still hope that she'll regret. She has no hope for us. I do. Or I did. I'm clearly confused. Today's been hard to wrap my mind around. And I was just walking the dog over around the neighborhood here. And I love this dog so much. Like I look at her and my heart melts. And I love this dog. And I think, how could somebody just give her away? Like she's the sweetest, best dog. And I do. I love her. <laughs> my wife gave her away. Just said, you have her. I can see getting rid of a person if you grew apart and didn't love them. Which we didn't. Maybe she did. I did not. But how do you give a dog away? I mean, to that end, how do you give a horse away? It's as if all at once she gave away, she cut everything out, she stripped everything away. Get rid of husband, get rid of dog, get rid of horse, move out of condo, shed things that you don't want, give your wedding ring and engagement ring back, because they're safer with me than where she was living, she said. And I'm so curious when we, I guess, inevitably divide up the condo, what will she want in her new life? What will she want in her life with him? It's so strange to me. What will she take from us and live on with him? The couch we used to sit on? The bed we used to sleep on? The, the nightstands that were in our bedroom? The knives I used to cook our dinner with? All of it has meaning. Will she take the wedding albums? Will she take the wedding pictures? What will she want? Will she want things just so I don't have them? I mean, the truth is, the couches and such, I'm sure I won't rent a place big enough to have them. So they'll either have to be sold or she'll take them. It will be weird. But I just wonder, putting myself in her shoes, what is she gonna want? You know, if I was in his shoes and my girlfriend finally got divorced, the married woman I had been living with, who was my girlfriend for three months, so messed up, when she finally got divorced and brought her stuff into my life, would that be weird for me? Who knows? I don't know the guy. Maybe, maybe he doesn't think that deeply. Oh, I was gonna make frames today. I didn't make frames. Oh, I have to go to the hardware store and get screws and fin- Yeah, okay. Things to do. Yeah, it's a weird world. It's a, it's a weird feeling to not be wanted by somebody who used to. It's strange to wonder if somebody is not well in the brain. Like, if that's the reason this happened. Because all the actual reasons she gave me make no sense. That's not a reason people blow up relationships. I'll show you what I do later. Okay, bye. Well, hey, I just wanted to kind of close out the day. And I got an email from her tonight. It was an accounting of things, and it, it was basically saying, hey, you owe me $792 for stuff you bought on our shared credit card. And I, I kind of knew this was coming, but even still, you know, we talked about it weeks and weeks ago, and then tonight at 7.30, she chose to send an email. She itemized what I owe her money for. And she closed, the, it, it was very, it just said like, hi Ken, you know, based on my records, here's what you owe me money for, you know, and it listed the things and it said, you can leave a check at the front desk or you can hand it to me next week when we talk. And that was my favorite part. It felt like foreshadowing, like we will be seeing each other next week when you're done with school, when we talk next week when you're done with school. So I end school on Thursday night. So Friday, are we meeting Friday? It's, it, uh, yeah. I think maybe we will not be meeting Friday. I think maybe I will, that's funny. I could mail her a check, I guess. But there was nothing personal in that email. And I think that's the thing that struck me. You know, it listed those things and then basically it said, thanks and put her name. And then underneath was like her email address and her cell phone number. It was, it was, it was a, a business email. You know, it was, it was perfunctory. All the information was there. It was clear. Thank you. Goodbye. And I guess earlier today when, when I had that sense of, I, I can't believe this is, this is me. I can't believe this is now. Yeah, it kind of carries that, it, it carries that forward. I can't believe the woman who emailed me that, that itemized list of what I owe her is my wife. I can't believe I was madly in love with her. I would have died for her. I would have taken a bullet for her. I would have done anything for her. 
and now she sends me this this cold calculating email of you owe me this much because of these reasons. Some of the expenses were yours, but I've, I've even split those with you. Wow, how generous. So the upside is, it hasn't wrecked me. I got an email from her that didn't level me or flat me. I'm more bummed that, yeah, okay, I have to pay money that I don't really wanna pay. So is that progress? You know, contact from her didn't send me into a spiral. Cool, I don't know. I just wanted to kind of close out the day and say, say hi and let you know what happened. The woman who's working really hard to be my ex. Man, I don't want that. <sighs> My ex-wife. Hey, are you married? No, I'm divorced. Hey, are you single? Yeah, well, I have my ex-wife. I have an ex. I'm divorced. I was married, but now I'm divorced. I have an ex. My ex-wife. My ex and I used to do blah, blah, blah. My ex and I traveled to here. When I was married, back when I was married, I used to. I learned to ride because my ex was a jumper. I don't want to talk like that. These are not big problems, right? This is a dumb thing to be hung up on, but since my life is my own, I don't want that. I guess it's destined to be my thing, but it's embarrassing. I committed to a relationship. I took vows. I pledged my life. I pledged everything to it. And she just opted out. She just said, no, for reasons that aren't good enough for me. And there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Two people get married, right? And, and you pledge to each other, like you love each other until one's like, eh, no. And even when this one's like, yes, 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 this one's like, no. So you're done. It's, embar it's embarrassing to be this one, the one that still wants, when this one's like, I want this one. And I guess that's why I want someone, because like she wants something else. So if I could have something else, then at least we'd be equal. I guess the progress is she's proven to herself to be so ugly that I don't want her. I don't want who she is. What I want is what I used to believe I had. That's what I want. That's what I miss. I miss the love and the kindness and what I thought was real. But of course, I don't know now if it was real. And that undermines confidence and trust and so many things. So I gotta come up with $792 to pay her for when I see her next week, I guess. Then read some more of that book called When Things Fall Apart. <laughs> Fitting, huh? Have a great night. I will talk to you tomorrow.